Hey everyone, and welcome back to IbraCorp. I know it's been a bit, but we're back, and today we're diving into the ultimate guide to setting up and managing a NAS using Unraid. If you're interested in creating a personal media server, backing up your data, or securing your network, then this video is hopefully for you. Let's go through everything you need to turn Unraid into a powerful, flexible NAS for home use. If you're interested in picking up Unraid by the end of this video or any of our other videos, be sure to check the link below to get a referral code. So first up, let's talk about why Unraid is an awesome choice for a media server. So unlike traditional NAS options, Unraid offers a little bit of an unmatched flexibility with features like Docker, VMs, and easy storage expansion. We've been covering it for years, and those long-term fans of our channel obviously know that we have a lot invested with Unraid. This makes it ideal for people who want custom setups and plenty of control over their media and data. So, you know, anyone want to host their media, you want to keep data stored, it's a good option for you as well. Now, when it comes to media servers, Unraid allows you to easily set up Docker containers for apps like Plex and Jellyfin, which you can see here. Plex is fantastic for remote access and smooth streaming, while Jellyfin is open source and subscription free, which makes it great for anyone who wants a truly self-hosted experience. And our previous video prior to this one, we compared Jellyfin, Plex, and MB to give you some idea on the differences between each. So make sure you check that out if you haven't yet already. With Unraid's Docker support, you can install and manage these apps easily, plus add plugins for extended functionality. And Unraid's parity-based storage means you can mix and match drives of different sizes. Super useful when you're building a media library on a budget. Now that we've talked about media, let's talk about backups. One of the most important and often overlooked parts of setting up any server, let alone a media server, and it's probably the most important because when things go wrong, that's when your backups become the most important to you. So a good backup strategy is essential, especially if you're managing a lot of personal data. I'm using the 32110 backup method to keep everything safe. You might've heard about the 321 method, pretty good method still to this day, uh, but we're gonna take it up that extra little bit of a step for you. So here's the breakdown. Three copies of your data, two types of storage, let's say your main Unraid server and an external hard drive, one offsite copy like cloud storage, one immutable copy that can't be changed, which protects against ransomware, uh, and a goal of zero errors by testing backups regularly. That's the most important thing, okay? Backups are only as good as your ability to restore them. If you restore them when things are going really bad and they're not working, guess what? That backup is completely useless to you. So make sure you actually check these backups from time to time. Obviously on a live server, you probably don't wanna be restoring a backup that's gonna overwrite you know, production settings. So if you have another server plus possibly or another device that you can try and test those on, that is also an option uh, open to you. Now, what I would do is I recommend using an external drive for one copy. Uh, with Unraid, you can schedule backups directly to other storage locations or set up your secondary storage Unraid server as a backup target. So you can link them in that way as well. Uh, you also have the ability to set up unassigned devices in here if you wish as well. This adds redundancy and ensures that your data is covered in case of a hardware failure or a network attack. Really important stuff to consider as well. Now, Unraid has a robust plugin ecosystem and there are some great tools for managing backups. Start with the community applications plugin, which obviously now comes with Unraid. You'll find that here. And you can see mine's due for an update, so I better make sure I do that soon. This gives you access to popular Unraid plugins like the CA Backup and Restore for app data and Duplicacy for cloud backups. Okay, so you can just simply search for them. We've got a couple of options there. And we also get to choose something like app data backup in here as well, which I use. And I've also created videos on these. So if I go to app data backup, which formerly known as CA Backup and Restore, you can see you get a whole bunch of settings in here. Feel free to copy mine if you don't know what to start with and I'll kind of explain a little bit. So we've got the backup type. We've got delete backups after X number of days. I usually put 14, keep at least seven. Um, and you've got the locations that you want to back up and where you want to back them up to. Now, obviously I'm backing them up to the same array in which I am copying from. So if I lost my complete server, it's gone. It's gone guys. Um, what you're not seeing here, obviously, is that I have another server that I back all this stuff up to as well. But 
just for the simplicity's sake, a new user won't have that, so this is what you're going to see. So it's perfect for keeping Plex or Jellyfin data safe without hassle. And then we know that those kind of media apps do produce a lot of metadata files and things like that um, and thumbnails and whatnot. So having those backed up is really, really good. Uh, it also makes it easy to restore if anything goes wrong. And if you want offsite backups, duplicacy is an excellent choice. So you can configure it to back up your unraid data to cloud services, adding that extra layer of protection in line with the 32110 strategy. If we look at the license types, so you see a personal license can be installed on one computer to back up files, personal reasons only. Um, and then when you wanna add more computers, that's when you add these prices. So you got $20 for the first computer, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's not free. It is open source and it's very cheap to take advantage of being able to back up to a cloud location as well as on site. Now, let's talk about security. Protecting your Unraid setup is key, especially if you access it remotely. So here are some essentials to keep your system secure. First, I recommend setting up a firewall either on your router or through Unraid's network settings to restrict access. Limit which devices can connect, and if you use SSH, make sure to disable root login and use strong passwords or SSH keys. Next, user permissions and folder encryption. So set up unique user accounts with specific permissions. Um, as you can see here, we have one user here. Unraid allows you to restrict access to sensitive folders, which is especially useful if multiple people use your network, and if you're handling personal data, consider encrypting those folders. So over here, we can see we've got a whole bunch of different shares. And obviously, this person has complete read write access to all of them. But we can change that at any point. Um, if we have a folder that we don't want them necessarily having read write to, um, we can change that to something else. So say you have a family member and you want them to access your family photos folder, but nothing else. This is how you could go about it. Another option is obviously VPN. Now we've covered VPNs endlessly on the channel and there's a variety of different options open to you these days compared to when we first started looking at Unraid many, many years ago. Firstly, Unraid has a built-in VPN manager called WireGuard. Now, if you set this up, you will have it working and be able to tap into your server remotely while not needing to expose the server to the web. Another option is something like TailScale, which we, again, we have separate videos on all of that that we've covered before. Previously, we've set up TailScale as a Docker container. Now, I still use it as a docking container, but since we've obviously created this, there is an option now to use TailScale as a plugin, which is the added benefit of not relying on the Docker service being started for you to be able to access your server. Very helpful for remote troubleshooting and things like that. So pick your preference. Either way is great. This, this option still works. I've had people tell me that it doesn't. I mean, the proof's in the pudding. It still works for me perfectly fine. But if you prefer the plugin option, definitely look that up. Now let's talk about performance. Unraid is unique because it doesn't rely on a traditional RAID level. Instead, it uses a parity-based approach. So if I just go over to our drives, this allows you to add drives of different sizes over time. So with parity, Unraid can recover data if a drive fails, as long as you have a parity drive, which you can see up the top here. For me, I've got one parity drive. You can have, I believe, up to two. Uh, and usually that drive has to be the biggest so that any other drive other than that drive is smaller in size and it will work. So I can have 10 eight terabyte drives. As long as my parity drive is eight terabytes also, I should be fine. Um, I can make my parity drive 20 terabytes and every drive can be eight still and that will be fine. So unlike RAID, you don't need matching drives. So it's perfect for upgrading storage bit by bit. Next, consider adding an SSD cache drive. Unraid supports SSD caching, which speeds up frequently accessed files great for media and Docker apps. To set it up, just go to your Unraid settings and assign an SSD to the cache pool, which you can see here, I've got two set up. I've got two different pools, totaling four devices acting as a cache. Really helpful, really useful. An important thing about the cache is when you're using stuff like media, quite often you set the cache drive as the landing, landing zone, if you will. So all activity happens there and then the mover will shift stuff over to your array when it's no longer required so that you're not read writing on your disks excessively. Um, very useful. Lastly, a high speed network setup is essential if you're streaming media or backing up large files. So if we just go back to settings, go to network settings. Here's our network settings. Unraid supports one gigabit per second and 10 gigabit per second connections. So make sure your router and network interface can handle the speeds that you want.
Now let's talk costs. I've used the link that we have from Unraid for our channel for you today to open up the pricing page. Unraid has a unique licensing model. So plans are based on the number of drives that you want to use. It's a one-time purchase, which is awesome compared to other NAS software that might charge annually. On top of that, consider the cost of drives themselves. Start with what you need and remember you can expand later. One of Unraid's best features is that you can do that. And don't forget some plugins have costs. Most of them are free. So budget for those if you plan to use backups or cloud tools like we discussed with Duplicacy, for example. Very minimal cost though, and usually a one-off charge where possible, which is really useful. I really hate subscription stuff, so it's good for me. Uh, if you're on a budget, get a basic Unraid license and add drives as you need. This way you get all of Unraid's core features and can scale up as your needs grow. You can see the cost here. Uh, you get the updates for one year, um, and then with the lifetime one, you get updates for life. So that's kind of where the licensing differs a lot as well, is the update frequency. Um, so you might want to consider lifetime, but if you just want to give it a try and see how you go, they also have a 30 day free trial that you can do as well. And look guys, that's it. It's a quick one for those who may not be well versed in Unraid and want to check it out. Um, or those who have been using it and want a quick tip on where to start looking to improve what their situation is. A lot of our channel has covered a lot of these topics as well. So please make sure you have a look through the channel. Um, we have a playlist just for Unraid beginners as well as, you know, Unraid veterans um, for those who are looking for a bit more info on how to upgrade their servers. If you've seen anything on my server that you want to know more about, drop it in the comments. I'll try to reply um, or we can spin up a, a separate video and I can go through those settings individually. A lot of people like to ask about the theming or, you know, settings for Docker and things like that. Uh, more than happy to take a look at those. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Unraid and self-hosting content. And let me know in the comments if you, what you want to see next. Until then, keep exploring, keep learning, and I'll see you in the next Ibracorp video.